Given is probably one of the most well-written BL stories out there in terms of plot and characters. It's a sad yet heartwarming story mixed with music and tragedy. It has a beautiful art style and animation and the music was above expectations. It really left a memorable impression. Along with the TV series, there is also currently a movie which gives us more of a look into the side characters. Love Stage is a story of a child actor who fell in love with a girl when they were shooting a commercial together. For years he always thought about her until he meets her again when they decide to make another commercial with the same actors. But that's when he finds out that she's actually a guy. Although he's shocked at first, he decides that there's nothing that's going to get in the way of his feelings for him. It's really a cute story with a bright and colourful art style and animation and the story, it's really good. It's got great characters as well. Classmates is a school life romance that depicts a beautiful story of young men falling in love. The plot is pretty simple and it doesn't have any of that over the top drama but it's super cute and wholesome. The uniqueness stems from the art style and animation that is so unlike anything that's been done before. The characters are incredibly well done, they have great interactions that make this movie so enjoyable to watch. Loveless is a fantasy story where each person is born with animal characteristics such as tails and ears until they lose their virginity. The main character has lost all his memories after his brother died and that's when a strange man appears claiming to be his fighting pair. It's a bit confusing but I do have to give credit to the creativity of the plot. It might be hard to follow but the depth is definitely there. My Very Own Hero is a story of a high schooler who is often used by a group of thugs as an errand boy. He wishes to fight back but he's too weak and that's when a man steps in saving him. In his eyes he becomes his very own hero. He's also the brother of his friend from school and he begins to admire him and even fall in love with him. It's rather an enjoyable school life with plenty of drama and romance. It's got multiple couples so different romance stories as well. It's not all too deep but it is definitely satisfying. Super Lovers is a story of an orphan boy who was a adopted by a family whose parents died in an accident shortly after. He did make a promise with his older brother to always be together so he goes to live with him when he gets older. The art style and character designs are impressive, I just really love the look of them. Unfortunately the plot was a little bit basic, kinda simple, not much to it but it was okay. Gravitation is the story of a guy who dreams of being in a band. One night his lyrics were discovered by a mysterious man who crushed his dream saying that he had no talent. Devastated by this he goes to find this man originally motivated by anger but instead falls in love. The plot definitely had potential but fell a bit short due to the characters. I found them really lacking but I'm sure that there would be some people out there who find them appealing. It's an old classic BL so it does have some charm and nostalgia to it. Jinjo Romantica is the story of a school student who moves in with his brother's friend and famous author. It also focuses on the daily lives of multiple characters and couples all revolving around work life. There's romance, relationships and plenty of drama with the couple's complications. The mix of different relationships keeps things fresh and the comedy balances everything out. Sekaiichi Hatsukoi is the spin-off of Junjo Romantica or is Junjo Romantica the spin-off? I really can't remember which one came first but it doesn't really matter because they both go hand in hand. You really can't watch one without the other. It focuses on the same premise as the previous anime and also manages to intertwine some of the other characters from it. But still, it's a completely original story on its own. Dakaichi is the story of an actor who always wins the Most Handsome Man Award. That is until a new rookie takes his spot as number one and is also casted to do a film together with him. Although his motivation for becoming an actor is only to get closer to his crush. The plot is pretty basic, it's got a lot of comedy and lighthearted fun, the character designs are stunning and the animation is of high quality. The Betrayal Knows My Name is about an orphan who has a special ability to see a person's painful memories just by touching them. One night his life is saved by a handsome, mysterious man which starts to awaken his forgotten memories. It's a reincarnation story of past lovers 
is mixed with a bit of fantasy and character designs that stand out. They are incredibly attractive and it's filled with drama, action and has some tragic moments that can be quite sad. Togana Nochi is basically a story of war and battles to the death. It's an adaptation of a visual novel and while I think it was probably one of the better anime adaptations, it still fell a bit short. You'll just get so much more from reading the original source material. The characters are interesting and the plot is quite good but it did cut out a lot of important dialogue for the story to really make sense. The Stranger by the Beach is a story that revolves around a boy who was left orphaned after his parents died. One day he meets a boy on the beach and they begin to grow closer and develop feelings for one another. It's basically just a wholesome and realistic romance that depicts the struggles of falling in love, commitment and being happy. For a rather short movie, I think it did a pretty good job of getting those feelings across. The art style and animation as well had so much life and movement to it. Spirit Pact is a story of a boy who was hit by a truck and died. While becoming a ghost, he meets a man that offers him the opportunity to become his spirit shadow, so he accepts. From then on, it follows their journey of fighting harmful spirits together. It's a supernatural action, but it's also got some comedy. While the romance isn't always directly in the spotlight, it's still got those touching moments of love between the characters. Hybrid Child is made up of three short stories and three different couples, but it always focuses on these artificial humans. They grow with the amount of love they are given, and although they aren't human, they have feelings and emotions just like any other living thing. If you want to spend your evening weeping uncontrollably, then go ahead and watch this. But I must warn you, the sole purpose of these stories are romance and tragedy. The whole thing is really beautiful, but still extremely heartbreaking. Gaku and Heaven is about this guy who is invited to a very prestigious school filled with talented young men, but he feels he's not very special and wonders why he was even offered a position in the school. It's basically just a fun, light, fan service type of plot, and the characters didn't really stand out. It's just a cute romance that has a lot of comedy and not much depth, but it was still an enjoyable series. Monochrome Factor is the story of a school student who meets a mysterious man that suddenly tells him that they have a destiny together. He doesn't really believe him at first until he gets attacked by a shadow monster. This is another supernatural action where the main characters partner up to defeat evil. Although the plot was good and the characters were okay, the lack of romantic development did leave me a bit disappointed. Descendants of Darkness is about a Shinigami whose job is to make sure that those who are dead stay in their realm. Shinigamis also work in pairs and his new partner seems to be hard to work with. This is a supernatural fantasy horror story that's got a lot of action. The story was quite good and although it's not a romance, the slight yaoi themes gave the story some spice to it. The characters were interesting and the art style was well done. I definitely liked the look of the character designs. Skio is about two main characters that share a dorm together and have split personality disorder. One of their personalities are in love with each other and the others hate each other. It's an overly dramatic plot that's far from a realistic reality, but if you're looking for a completely fictional world to get lost in, it's not a bad choice. The characters definitely had their moments which were likeable, but there were also some moments that were lacking. Tightrope is a story of the heir to a Yakuza family who falls in love with his childhood friend. It depicts a very sweet romance between friends, but also has a little bit of drama with the whole Yakuza slash gangster theme. I haven't read the original manga, so I can't say if it was a great adaptation. It does feel like there's a lot more to the story, but I still enjoyed the animation. Antique Bakery is about a high schooler who confesses to his crush, but was sadly rejected. Years later, he goes to work at a bakery where his boss is the same guy who rejected him years ago. At first glance, it sounds like a rather basic plot, but it's actually such a unique story with many original aspects. It's a great comedy that just follows the daily lives of these wonderful characters and the shenanigans they get up to working at the bakery. It's definitely a pleasant change from the norm. Vassalord is a story of a cyborg vampire and a real vampire who fight crime and each other. It's a wonderful action-packed supernatural mystery, but the OVA was barely just a glorified advertisement for the manga. It barely even covers
covered the first volume. Although it is extremely well done with the voice acting, animation and character designs, the quality was surprising for such a short series and although it would have made a little bit more sense if it was a full adaptation. Dramatical Murder is a little bit hard to follow but basically the plot is about the main character who is trying to live a peaceful life but gets dragged into a dangerous match after hearing of people's disappearances. It's a sci-fi mystery with psychological elements and it's another adaptation from a visual novel. It was somewhat poorly done and it didn't make a whole lot of sense until the very end. Basically all of the romance is cut out so in my opinion you're better off playing the game to be honest. Yes, Master of Demonic Cultivation is about a guy who is reincarnated in the body of a lunatic and reunited with a former classmate. Together they fight demons, ghosts and even other cultivators. It's such a beautifully elegant story with a historical setting yet action packed with amazing visuals and animation. While the romance is very subtle, it's still such a touching and exciting story that was really a successful adaptation. Papa Date Shitai is a story that follows the life of a single dad who hires a new housekeeper to keep up with the cooking, cleaning and other tasks. Although he starts to help out with a lot more than just the housework. I think this is actually a pretty good mix of smut and wholesome. The story is pretty cute and although the art style and animation wasn't anything spectacular, it was just a short series that was somewhat satisfying. The Titans Bride is a story about a guy who recently graduated from school and he gets Isekai'd into a world filled with Titans. This is where the king declares that he's his fated partner and wants to get married. For as ridiculous of a premise this story is, it's actually pretty good, the manga that is. The anime adaptation was a bit of a letdown and it just felt completely lacking. It did follow the original material to some degree and the character designs were good, although I can't really say the same for the animation. Mirage of Blaze is a story about a typical high school student until he meets a man who tells him he is the reincarnation of a king, which also awakens his ability to see evil spirits. This has that reincarnation and past lovers tropes and again lots of action, drama and fighting the supernatural. The characters were good but the plot did need to iron out a few creases. Angel's Feather is a story about a new student who gets dragged into another world along with two other students after an earthquake hits. Now it's an adaptation of a game which I have not played. It's a visual novel. I think it's a sci-fi fantasy with some romance and drama. Although this adaptation left a whole lot up to the imagination. I didn't really think it came together all that well. The art style and character designs were nice to look at though. Fake is a story of two police officers who take a vacation together. One of them has feelings for the other and hopes to take their relationship further, although that's put on hold when a series of murders and missing persons keep happening in the area. It's a police mystery with a bit of romance and comedy. The story was enjoyable and the characters were likeable, although it is an older series so you can't expect much from the art and animation. Hyperventilation is a story about a guy who suffers from a collapsed lung and always receiving unwanted attention for it. Although the class president shows him kindness and also becomes his first crush. For a series of few words, it manages to say so much. In terms of a short story that feels so complete, this is what other shows need to strive for. The stunning art style and animation that has so much mood and feelings to it, as well as the unique and very interesting characters. Despite the series having adult scenes, it felt sophisticated and not trashy at all. Antidote is about a rich kid from a privileged background who was kicked out by his family. Lacking even common knowledge to do the simplest tasks, he relies heavily on his new landlord and gangster he just met. It's a fun slice of life comedy with really great characters. It's also got a little bit of drama mixed into the plot. The characters' personalities were also a unique surprise and the art style was really good. The animation at times was a little bit jarring, but it's still a cute series. Beryl and Sapphire is the story of two actors 
characters and it depicts the roles these characters play. It's almost episodic in a sense where it jumps around from one story to the other. It's very unique in the way the story is told and the characters are just fantastic. It offers so much in terms of content from comedy to school life and much more. The animation of course being bright and full of life just like the stories told. Yuri on Ice is a story of a skater who just experienced a crushing defeat in an ice skating competition. Although he soon finds himself the center of attention when a video of him performing one of his idol's routines goes viral. Also this famous champion shows up in person to become his coach. This is such a magical story that mixes sports, drama and romance. It's captivating to watch with amazing visuals and smooth animation. Its sense of competition keeps you on edge and the characters make it hard not to fall in love with this series. Heaven Official's Blessing is about a main character who was a beloved martial god but now he ascends the heavenly realm to the human world as nothing more than a scrap collecting god with no followers. The story contains a lot of mystery elements with supernatural themes and plenty of action. The animation is just truly stunning and the plot being a historical setting makes for a unique character design and aesthetic to the show. This is yet again just another solid adaptation of a beloved manhwa. Someone else's BL comic is a story of just a regular high school student but he also has some secrets. He enjoys cross-dressing and reading BL comics and is searching for someone to accept him. But after a date goes wrong he is seen by one of his classmates who now knows his secret. This is a rather wholesome school life romance mixed with a bit of drama. It contains unique elements and the characters themselves carry this story. I liked the art style and animation but it really doesn't even scratch the surface of the original material. It's definitely worth the watch but the manhwa is even more worthy of a read. Semantic Error is just an animation that takes some moments from the manhwa and adapts it into animation. It's basically just a preview to the original comic but it's done well in terms of animation, character designs and chemistry between the characters. The story revolves around two school students, one who is blunt, very hard-headed and serious, and the other being more whimsical, fun and outgoing. They tend to clash and butt heads a lot, which turns into a story of enemies to lovers. Yarachin depicts the story of a new school student who finds out it's compulsory to join a club. So he decides to join the photography club thinking it would be easy, but the photography club is definitely not what it seems. For something so intentional, provocative and fan servicey, the plot is actually not so bad. The characters are interesting and it's definitely something that's just fun, whimsical and very smutty. You'll just laugh at the absurd shenanigan these very lovable characters get up to. The Tyrant Falls in Love is about a guy who is currently in love with his upperclassmen, but when he manages to confess his feelings, it turns out his crush is an aggressive, self-centered homophobe. The story and character honestly weren't my favorite but I'm sure there's some of you out there who would enjoy it. The animation and art style were quite nice to look at but the story felt a bit rushed and rather questionable. I just don't think it's a wise decision to put a homophobic character in the middle of a BL story but that's just me. Kid Air Papa is a story about an overly protective father and best-selling author who tries to scare away his son's friends to keep him safe. Although one of his friends seemed to be rather the persistent and won't go away easily. This had a bit of a rocky start but it did get a lot better towards the end. It even had some twists that were unexpected and a rather enjoyable short story to watch. The animation art style were fairly good, there wasn't too many noticeable flaws. I did feel the story was a little bit rushed as well but at least it felt somewhat satisfying. Hey Class President is a story about the Vice President who is in love with the Student Council President. He's totally clear clueless to the things going on around him, including the vice president's feelings. It's a fairly typical story in a school setting with romance and drama, but it's honestly just a wholesome plot with genuine characters. It did a pretty good job of fitting in a passable story with only two episodes, and the art style is very pretty. It definitely makes you want to go and read the manga. Twittering Birds Never Fly, The Clouds Gather is a movie that follows the life of a Yakuza boss and his new appointed boss. Bodyguard. It revolves around this bittersweet life.
life of these characters who experience tragedy and hard times, but also finding peace with it. It's a very mature story and the characters are just amazing. It's a beautiful adaptation of a masterpiece manga that is definitely worth the read. It's a very heavy plot and filled with emotion which comes across effortlessly. Alongside the movie there is also currently a short OVA that you can watch. Banana Fish is a story that depicts the life of a runaway boy who was raised by the head of a mafia. Now he is the boss of his own gang and meets a photographer who came to Japan from America. This is where they start investigating the mystery banana fish and form an ever-growing bond together. This is such a fantastic, beautifully written plot that is executed perfectly. The characters are unique and the art style is incredibly original. Although it is truly a tragic tale that would bring anyone to tears. Foreign Love Affair is about the heir to a Japanese Yakuza clan and he just got married on a cruise ship. Although the marriage is just for show and instead of spending the night with his bride, he ends up spending it with the ship captain. It wasn't actually half bad and in such a short amount of time, I actually grew to like these characters and sympathize with them. The characters were enjoyable and the story was okay for being so short. It definitely would have been better if it had more time, but still a decent show to watch. Number six is about this guy who lives a peaceful life in a world without poverty or conflict. That's when he meets a fugitive boy who he helps hide and discovers the world is not what it seems. It's a sci-fi action adventure and a story of two boys fighting the bad guys. I feel like it had a lot of potential to be great, but something about it just let it down. I can't even remember at this point because that's all this series has become, quite forgettable. Although I do remember enjoying it slightly at the time, it was good but definitely nothing special. Embracing Love is this historical story set in the early Meiji period in Japan. It depicts the story of forbidden love of two warring sides. It's a harsh story of love and tragedy and it's quite deep as well. I actually really enjoyed watching this despite being an older series, I love the samurai theme and the characters were interesting. It's the kind of story that does grab your attention and the character designs were a bit eccentric but I think it added to its appeal. I know Kusabi takes place in a futuristic setting where the human populations are divided by class. The light-haired elites and the dark-haired mongrels. There are also people from the slums where the main character is from. He's also a pet for one of these elites. The concept of the plot is fantastic and well thought out. It's such a great story and the animation kind of lived up to that, but honestly nothing can really compare to the original novel. For an adult animation, this is the first hentai that has ever made me cry, like a lot. So the story and its characters are better written than some anime and it's definitely a respectable series. Maiden Rose is about two countries who are at war and the story revolves around a prince from one country who has a knight from the other country. Their bond together is strong but could also possibly break from the war and disapproving gazes. I think the plot has a great premise of love can beat hate. It's a sweet thought but sadly this adaptation did not depict it very well. I haven't read the original manga but I can feel we're just missing a lot from this story. Sex Pistols is about this guy who all of a sudden starts to receive a lot of unwanted romantic attention. He soon discovers a secret world of humans that evolve from animals and his DNA is in high demand. If you like animal characteristics, you'll definitely like this series. I think the supernatural elements were great and the story was fairly interesting. The characters are cute and for a short series, it did a pretty good job. Embracing Love is the story of two characters who are working in the film industry. While one of them claims to be in love with him, the other refuses to admit his feelings at all. I'm not usually a fan of stories depicting the entertainment entertainment industry, but I found this one to be somewhat interesting. I liked the drama and the characters, plus the art style was really pretty. Although the animation of course, being an older series, it wasn't anything spectacular. I still think it was pretty decent for its time. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for helping me hit 50,000 subscribers. I did make this video to show my appreciation and it took a very, very long time to compile all of this. So if you could please leave a like on the video, drop a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!